we say Krishna. The essence of who he is. He is uh, an irrepressible child, a terrible prankster, an enchanting flute player, a graceful dancer, an irresistible lover, a truly valiant warrior, a ruthless vanquisher of his foes, a man who left a broken heart in every home, an astute statesman and kingmaker, a thorough gentleman, a yogi of the highest order and the most colorful incarnation, Krishna. To contain him in these seven days is an impossible challenge. <laughs> At the most we can just have a glimpse of who he is. and that glimpse should be more than enough. <laughs> Krishna is seen and perceived and understood and experienced in many, many different ways by different people. Duryodhana, through the eyes of Duryodhana. For those of you who do not know the background, I will be because unless you understand the whole tapestry of the story and the situation in which he existed, many aspects of who he is will be missed, so we will go into it, but right now. Duryodhana is a man because of certain situations into which he was placed, insecure, angry, jealous, greedy, and feeling wronged all his life and uh, because of actions which came forth from his greed and anger, he became the key for destruction of his whole race. In Duryodhana's words, <coughs> He is a smiling rogue, if there was ever one. He can eat, he can drink, he can sing, he can dance, he can make love, he can fight, he can gossip with old women, play with little children. Who says he is God? That's Duryodhana's perception. Radhe, his childhood lover, a milkmaid, a simple woman of the village. But uh, with such unfaltering love and devotion, she has become so big that today you cannot talk of Krishna without Radhe. We don't say Krishna Radhe, we say Radhe Krishna. She has become a simple village woman. She has become as significant as Krishna or little more significant than him. She said, Krishna is with me. 
he is always with me. Wherever he is, whoever he is with, he is still with me. That's her perception. Shikandin, a tortured human being, because of a certain situation within himself, right from his child, this is an absolutely tortured soul. So Shikandin said, Krishna never gave me any hope, but when he is there, the breeze of hope touches everybody. I can go on like this, <laughs> different people saw different facets of who he is. For some he is God, for some he is a crook, for some he is a lover, for some he is a fighter, so many things he is. If we want to taste an essence of what it means when we say Krishna, the consciousness that we refer to as Krishna, if we have to be touched by this, we need Leela. Here we are for the Leela. Leela means it is the path of the playful. We are not here just to play, we are here to explore the most profound and the most serious aspect of life, but playfully, conducted playfully. Otherwise Krishna won't be there. <laughs> if you want to explore this path playfully, if you want to be playful, You need a heart full of love, a joyful mind and a vibrant body, otherwise there's no leela. You sit there. A loving heart, a joyful mind and a vibrant body do you have? Only then there is leela. experience the spirit of Gokula. We should learn to look at each other with a tremendous amount of love. We should learn to walk with joy in our step. Till Krishna was seven, He was in this place called Gokula. This is his childhood. Joyfully, very proudly, he says, I stole butter. If I don't steal butter, there would be no zest in the village, no excitement. 
I would hide behind the mother and make loving eyes at them and they would smile. <laughs> Why Krishna is such a huge factor in the cultural ethos of this country is, this is a man who romped through his life no matter what was happening. His life went through various types of situations, right from his childhood, many extreme situations. But the most important factor is he went through it like a dance, joyfully, blissfully, lovingly. Wherever he was, whether he is in a battle, or uh, just about to behead his foe, there was a smile on his face. <laughs> Unfortunately, people would like to see this as a divine quality. Smile is a human quality, <laughs> it's not a divine quality. <laughs> Human beings who have lost it have transported their joy to heaven. <laughs> they have exported their joys to heaven, only there it's possible. You know, twenty-four hours being joyful, being loving is not out of reach for a human being. And he couldn't believe why his mother is so angry because uh, normally he, she gets angry about many things, but if he smiles at her, if he makes she'll be okay. But today she's not relenting, she's continuously angry. She just tied him up to the pounding wood. He just dragged the pounding wood, a very heavy pounding wood and dragged it on outside. One younger girl and a little older girl came and they noticed. Krishna noticed the younger girl was Lalita who was his playmate. The twelve-year-old girl was Radhya. Radhe, the moment she set her eyes upon Krishna, a seven-year-old boy, from then he never went out of her eyes, he lived in her eyes. The word Radhe means… Uh, Ra means ras or color or juice of life or love, they means giver. This is a path to the ultimate, but it is a path of intimacy. It is a path of tremendous passion. It's a path which does not e exclude anything, but the very nature of the path is such that once a person steps into it, everything else just disappears. When Radhe was born and she was such a beautiful and lively girl, she set the whole village aflame with her life. The fragrance of her effervescent nature, she set the whole village aflame. And her maternal grandmother, who was her foster mother, was so overjoyed by this girl, she just picked up a cartwheel, a heavy cartwheel and set lamps on this cartwheel, kept it on her head and danced all over the village. This family from Barsana was to migrate to another place called Vrindavan. He told her, I will come to Vrindavan. Once a person raises beyond certain limitations of his consciousness, every thought of his becomes the will of God itself. So whole Gokula 
went to Vrindavan and there a whole new life started. So from childhood, he is moving on. From a little boy, he is becoming a little big boy. The gopis played with Krishna as a child. They saw him as their lover. They worshipped him as the ultimate lord. Various forms of emotion, various forms of relationships. This is not different people. The same people at different times, sometimes they saw him as a child, sometimes as a lover, sometimes as God himself. So many old conventions were broken and especially the youth and children enjoyed much more freedom than they had ever enjoyed before. These little boys and girls went to bath at the same time, they splashed water at each other and they played, they looked at each other. Things were different. On a certain evening, a full moon day, these boys and girls gathered on the banks of river Yamuna and uh, initially, they started playing by throwing things at each other, hurling words and abuses and having fun, throwing water, throwing sand. Then after some time it broke into a dance and they began to dance and they danced and danced and danced because they were in such an exuberant and joyful state. And naturally they gathered around him and it just went on almost half the night. This is the time, this is the first incident of Ras Leela, where a simple, joyful mingling of people rose to a transcendental state. So he always he presented himself in the best possible way whether it was physical self or his emotional self or mental self or whatever, he always presented himself in the best possible way that he could. This is love, I want you to understand this. If you really have love for life around you, you will always see how to be at your best to everything around you. If you have care and concern for life around you, every moment you must be in the best possible way, isn't it? Yes? So Krishna exhibited this every moment of his life. So he never as a child walked out of the house without a peacock feather in his <laughs> headdress. <laughs> Krishna expressed to his mother that he wants to marry Radha. His mother said, uh, she's not an appropriate girl for you because she's five years older than you and she's already betrothed to somebody else. Krishna said, uh, I don't know all these things of appropriateness. From the moment she saw me, she has loved me and she has lived in me. So, I want to marry this girl. This argument went on between mother and son and mother had no words to say, so she reported to the father. Then Nanda thought it's time to take him to the guru so that let him speak. So Gargacharya and his disciple, who was to be Krishna's teacher, Sandipani, were there and uh, they said, uh, your purpose of life is different. It has been prophesied that you are the deliverer, you are the savior of dharma in this world. Krishna said, I don't wish to be a deliverer, I just love the cows and the bulls and the men and the women and the boys and the girls and the mountain and the trees here. I don't wish to go and deliver anything, I just want to live here. I'm in love with people, I'm in love with things around here, I just want to live here. I don't want to save anybody, I don't want to deliver anybody, I just want to live here. Then Gargarcharya thought it's time to reveal 
the truth about his birth. So Gargacharya talked about the prophecy that Narada Muni had made and Krishna is not Nanda and Yashoda's son for the first time they revealed to him. Then Gargacharya said, Narada has clearly identified you, all the signs indicate it's you and you have exhibited all the qualities that Narada talked about. Everything is right, you are that person that has been talked about by many sages and Narada has fixed the date, time and place and you fit into all that, it can't be wrong. All this descended upon him with such force, he just stood there silently and then slowly walked towards Mount Govardhan. A hill like this, he just walked up to the topmost point and just stood there looking at the sky. The sun was setting, looking at the setting sun. Suddenly a tremendous sense of empowerment went through him. This was his moment of enlightenment and reminder. He just stood there for many hours, realizing and experiencing so much within himself. When he walked down that hill, he was a completely different person altogether. That playful cowboy was gone. Suddenly, there was a new serenity about him. There was a new sense of <coughs> a completely new sense of dignity and divinity about him. When he walked down, all these days these people who just played with him, who enjoyed his dance and music, suddenly they began to bow down to him. He did nothing. He just went up the mountain, stood there for a few hours and walked down. Suddenly anybody who saw him started bowing down to him, not knowing what they're doing. He knew he had to leave. But before he left, this was not a full moon. The last full moon rasa is over, but uh, he organized an unscheduled rasa. He wanted to just for once dance and sing with his people. So he sang and danced and uh, everybody knew he's leaving. Radhe just worked herself into such a frenzy of ecstasy and bliss within herself, it just didn't matter to her. She just transcended the normal limitations of emotion and became so ecstatic and wild-eyed that nothing mattered to her. So Krishna went to her, he knew what it means to her. So he went to her, held her and he pulled out his flute from his waistband and gave it to her. This flute is only for you, no more flute for me. Never again he played flute in his life. He just gave it to her. <coughs> From that day onwards, Radha started playing flute like Krishna. Krishna never again played the flute. start looking at another dimension of Krishna. Krishna is a teacher. Krishna is an embodiment of the divine. Krishna is an ultimate yogi. So his whole teaching has come down in the form of Gita. So right now I will give you a gift of Gita. You don't have to read it from end to end. You just read something here and there so that at least you could ask the right kind of question and we could explore his teaching to some extent. So please, uh, Gita is not just a book, it's not just somebody's words. If you went deep, into your, deep enough into yourself, this is what you would speak. So Krishna did not choose Arjuna, 
at last he found one guy. willing to sit through the whole eighteen chapters. <laughs> that too he had to be driven to desperate moment in his life. A few days earlier even Arjuna would listen. Imminent death and destruction, then he listens. There was never a time when I or you or any of these kings here did not exist. And all of us shall certainly exist in future too. Now he's talking about life in its essential quality, not life as people. So the life in front of you, you cannot harm it. You cannot obliterate it, don't believe such things. You cannot really obliterate life. You are only going to put an end to this person now who is standing in front of you. But he continues, so do you, it's always been. When we say, whatever you consider as divine, whatever is the source of creation must be eternal, isn't it? Even from your understanding, okay, you don't know it. I'm saying even from your understanding, that which is the source of creation must be eternal, isn't it? Creation itself is not eternal, it comes and goes. But that which is the source of creation must be eternal. So in that context he is saying, don't you worry, your whole business is with the physical surface. Whether you live, if you live joyfully, this physical is meaningful. Once you have decided, wherever you are put, you are only going to make misery out of it. You will make anger out of it, hatred out of it violence out of it. It is all right to obliterate the physical, but the deeper dimension of who is standing in front of you cannot be killed. They have always been, they will always be. The same is true with you, the same is true with them. So do not lament about these things. Now a time has come when in the physical plane of reality you have to take action. Destruction is needed. This is why, if he, because he is coming from this experience, he was pained and hurt when people were pained. He laughed with people, he cried with people. But now, he turned himself to a different gear. Now he is not standing there as another human being among human beings. He is standing, standing there as ultimate nature. When he is standing there as a divine possibility, now he speaks in a completely different tongue. This same man, Krishna, when he stood there as a human being, just because a man had six welts on his back, he risked his life to nurse those six welts on somebody's back. You know, we were looking at this in Punyajana ship. But this same man now says, you can slaughter this hundred thousand people, don't worry, it is just the body. But he didn't say that when that man was in pain with six wells on his body. You need to understand this. When he stood there as a human being, he was a fantastic human being. Now he is standing here as a divine possibility, he is no more concerned about the physical. He is just talking about, let's melt the parts. Anyway, they'll get reshaped again. Right now they're all cracked up, no point trying to struggle with them. Let's melt the pots off, they will anyway find their way. You cannot take away the source of who they are, you can only take off the surface. Let's do it. Can you see the difference in the man? He sticks his life out just to nurse six wounds in somebody's back. Now he is willing to take hundred thousand lives with a smile on his face. So you have to look at the statement, from whom it is coming. Now anybody can repeat these words, probably somewhere else it says, uh, it's all right to kill. You cannot kill anybody, you can neither be killed nor kill. So it's okay, go ahead and slaughter. 
someone else who is not in this state should not speak these words. This is why I always tell people, don't read the Gita because you will go according to your logical mind and it will be very convenient for all the pain and suffering that you heap upon other people. After all, what is there? Nobody dies and is born, it is okay. This is true only when it's true with you also. Only when it is true with you also, you are also beyond pain, you are also beyond suffering, you are also beyond life and death. Only then you say these words. Otherwise, you don't parrot these words at all. It's not for you to say this. When it comes from Krishna, it is genuine and true. If somebody else just parrots these words, it is utter falsehood. Krishna is supposed to be blue-bodied. Maybe he was dark-skinned, but people who were aware saw the blueness of his energy, so they went about describing him as blue. You will see in the existence, anything that is vast beyond your perception generally tends to be blue, whether it's the ocean or the sky, these are the two things which are not perceivable in normal terms. Anything which is larger than your perception tends to be blue because it is the basis of all-inclusiveness. Today it's good that all of you have turned blue. We will go through a certain process to we will use imagination, but you need to understand everything that man has created has come from his imagination. Here we have the necessary energy to use imagination and make it into an absolute reality within ourselves. So by the time we are done with this, you must be shining blue, not just clothes blue. part of your blue. just fell in love with him and uh, both men and women couldn't take their eyes off him.
happened in I saw Vishnu or Krishna, whoever it is, a blue, a divine form. It is possible for me only in the presence of Sadhguru. Nothing else. So now, I don't know whether it is Shiva or Vishnu. <laughs> I'm happy with what, what it is. Well, <laughs> <laughs> he's a miracle. Not a miracle maker, he is a miracle himself. Don't miss the miracle. In you appreciating his sense and intelligence and activity, don't miss the miracle. That's the most significant aspect of him. Only because he's such a miracle, that type of life he lives. To be devote is a very intelligent way to live. That means uh, you're always overwhelmed with sweet emotions. Is it not an intelligent way to exist, to keep yourself very sweet? If you're overwhelmed with sweet emotions, your physical body and your mind and the world around you will function at its best for you. Your body will offer its best to, it, best to you, your mind will offer its best to you, the world will offer its best to you and what's beyond also will offer its best to you. So devotion versus intelligence, no, devotion is very deep intelligence. If you just be here, this place is loaded. This is not just simply a forest of trees and animals. This place is loaded. You don't have to imagine things, you don't have to see things that you don't see. Just be here. It has an impact on you. You don't have to hear or see anything. But uh, your being will not go uninfluenced if one can simply be. This art form that you will see now in many ways is the basis of the famous Odyssey dancing. Most Odyssey dancers of any caliber in their early age have been Gotipuas. They are called Gotipuas. What a Gotipua means is a young boy below his puberty age will dress up like a girl and do the ras like Krishna and Radhe. They are very good singers and incredible dancers and this is also a way of getting into the Guru Shishya Paramparya, disciplining one's life, learning about the various dimensions of his own inner nature. A person who goes through this discipline for six to seven years definitely turns out as a very balanced, sensible, loving human being. It's a very different way of transforming a human being. Yesterday someone was asking uh, how to practice love and devotion. <laughs> These are very acrobatic devotees. You don't have to be such an acrobat to be a devotee, but uh, you definitely need the humility of those little boys to be a devotee. One who does not make himself important is a devotee. Now Parvati is struggling, shall I be Shiva devotee or Vishnu devotee? There is no such thing. All devotees are one party. What he is devoted to, what tools he is employing to make himself into utter sweetness within himself, what does it matter? He has reached the peak of sweetness within himself.
that's all that matters. Through this whole drama of all the people, Krishna is going through the maximum amount of drama, but untouched. Because uh, he said, yoga staha kuru karmani, that means first establish in yoga and then act. If you act without establishing yourself in yoga, then your action will become an entanglement, it doesn't matter what you're doing. Simple things that people take up to do in their life. After all, for most of the people, ninety-five percent of the people in the world, all that they have taken up is just to earn something for their survival, procreate, bring up their children, that's it. It is taking an unusually heavy toll, simple life process. It is not necessary this way, but unfortunately it does go that way for many people simply because there is no playfulness in their way of existence. There is no playfulness in the way they live. They are too dead serious. Just bring little liveliness and playfulness into little activity that you do, you will see it will make a big difference. <laughs> okay, right now you must take this up in your life five different activities in your life, simple things. As soon as you go from tomorrow, at least five simple activities in your life, you make those simple things playful, okay? If you don't know how, first write it down, look at it, whether it works, without making yourself too obvious and too out of the way. Just a little playfulness into those little, little activities. Just keeping something, picking up something, driving, Simple things, you know, five different activities, you make them playful, slowly it will grow into other areas of life. These seven days, uh, the way it has happened, as you know, all the effort has been by the volunteers, they've been working for more than a month, month and a half, a group of them. 
uh, a few brahmacharis and sannyasis have been working day and night for the last two, three months to get everything to its present uh, state. For both the participants and all of you and the volunteers, mm, bring some leela into your life. Just leela through your life, that's all that matters. And uh, you just have to handle the immediate playfully. I will handle the ultimate for you. If you handle the immediate in your life playfully, the ultimate, I will handle it for you.